Abbott and Costello program brought to you by Camel, the cigarette that's first in the service. Camel stay fresh, cool smoking, and slow burning because they're packed to go around the world. Listen to the music of Freddie Rich and his orchestra, the songs of Connie Haynes. Tonight's guests, Cary Grant and Don Barkley. And starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. What's the matter, Costello? What's all the excitement? Oh, Abbott, I gotta get over to my new radio station right away. I gotta broadcast something very important to the women about their Easter shopping. And what is it? I just passed the makeup me window, and either they were undressing the dummies, or the women ain't wearing anything this spring. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, let's talk sense. I'd like to know one thing, Costello. Why can't I hear your radio uh, on my station at home? Why is it that I can't hear it? I can't get the uh, thing in at all. No, no. What wavelength are you broadcasting on? Oh, the wavelength. That's what I can't see. Oh, we've been broadcasting on little bye-byes. Little bye-byes? Yeah, short wave. Oh. (laughs) So look, how long have you been mixed up with short waves? Ever since I got slapped by a tall (laughs) whack. Look, I'm trying to find out the power of your radio station. How many volts do you have? Oh, I got plenty of volts. My father votes, my mother votes, uh, I no, vote. No, 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 no. Not votes, I mean votes, with an L, L. What's voltage? Yes. Yes, what? That's right. What right? What is voltage? I'm asking you. And I'm telling you. You're telling me what? Yes. Here we go again. Oh, <laughs> listen, I'll explain it another way. At your house, you have a little electric light bulb. Now, what do you see on the bottom of that bulb? Light. <laughs> <laughs> But suppose the flies weren't there. Then it wouldn't be my house. Oh. (laughs) Will you pay attention? On the bottom of your electric light bulb, it says 40 watts. Now, that means wattage. And wattage was discovered by a man named James Watt. What was the man's name? I don't know. Uh, Was it Smith? No, it wasn't Smith. What was the man's name? Are you asking me or telling me? I'm telling you. You're telling me what? Uh, That's right. What's right? Correct. See, you have you have watts in your radio station, and your antenna throws out watts. What is what doing in my aunt Anna's house? Her husband's name is Dinkelberger, and she's a good friend of Mrs. Cockenlocker's. All right, look, look, Costello, I'm talking about what the... happened to us. All right, I'm talking about the antenna. Haven't you got an antenna that goes on the roof? Sure, that's where she goes to hang the laundry. Uh, look, my goodness, don't you know the difference between a radio antenna and a wash line? A radio antenna draws the waves. And a wash line waves the draws. Oh. <laughs> this is just a waste of time. I don't know. Well, good evening, fellas. Say, what's all the noise about, bud? Oh, hello, Ken. I was just arguing with Costello about his radio station. <laughs> oh, that pile of junk. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm not interested in his radio station. He wouldn't give me a job as the announcer. Niles, your hands are too long. I need an announcer with little tiny hands. Little tiny hands? Yeah, you've got to have short paws for station identification. <laughs> Look, Costello, will you stop fighting with Niles? After all, you're a fine one to judge talent. That's right, bud. Yeah. Why, he even refused to give my beautiful wife a job as a singer, and her voice is trained. Trained? It ain't even housebroken yet. <laughs> I heard that remark, you fat pontoon head. I said it for you to hear, you skinny Ah, thing. Costello, take it easy. You might be interested to know that many people have praised my singing. Yes, yes. Every time you start to sing, your dog leaves home. Last time he left, he took the doghouse with him. Don't pay any attention to this Costello. This time he takes you. Shut I Pay no attention to him, Mrs. Niles. Uh, let him keep his radio station. Oh, well, frankly, Mr. Abbott, I am a little disappointed. Because I did so want to do a short wave broadcast to our boys overseas. You know, I have a leaning towards soldiers. I saw you tilt a little towards sailors. <laughs> oh, how dare you speak to me like that, you big, fat blubberhead. Mrs. Niles, I am not a blubberhead. Or either am I a fat. <laughs> not fat. The Army could use you to replace a landing barge for active duty. (laughs) 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 Oh, no. 
darling, you really told him that time. Oh, dear, your wit just staggers me. Oh, no, darling, your wit staggers me. Oh, no, dear, you stagger me. Uh, no, I insist you stagger me. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just heard from two punch-drunk fighters. Oh, no. oh I've been doing something. Costello, that's no way to handle people. If that's how you're conducting your radio station, you won't have a listener left. Answer that. Station IOU, the voice of the creditors. Luke Costello speaking. Mr. Costello, I've listened to your new radio station ever since it started last week, and I think your programs are wonderful. Really? Yes. I was going to send you a fan letter, but I can't write it until next week. Well, what happens next week? That's when they take off my straight jacket. Get out of here! Get out! Come From India into Burma, pointing toward China, winds the Lado Road, substitute for the enemy-held Burma Road. To American Army engineers on the Lado Road, to United States bases and outposts throughout the world, go Camel cigarettes. By the million, by the ton. For camels are first with men in all the services according to actual sales records. Because camels have to be fresh in Burma, they're fresh around your corner, too. Yes, your camel cigarettes Stay fresh, cool smoking, and slow burning because they're packed to go around the world. Today, more people want camels. More people want the fresh cigarette, the cigarette with more flavor. So remember, if your store is sold out, camel cigarettes are worth asking for again. Camel cigarettes. Camel standard of costlier tobaccos is the same for soldier, for civilian, anywhere in the world. Freddie Rich and the orchestra play Morton Gould's lovely modern composition, The Fox. Costello's radio station. Close, wasn't I? <laughs> hey, when that guy was born, something terrible happened, Abbott. He lived. Oh, there you are, Costello. Listen, I just called a talent agency, and they're sending a lot of talent over to do programs for you. Actors, and writers, and singers, now, just and... just a minute, Abbott. And... I'll take care of all the singing myself. Don't forget, I studied opera under those three great singers. John, Charles, and Thomas. Oh, that's silly. Silly, is it? I studied opera with Lawrence Tibbet and Gypsy Rose Lee. Ah, ah, wait a second. Gypsy Rose Lee doesn't sing. Who cares? I... <laughs> I don't believe you're a singer at all, Costello. Did you ever sing professionally? Oh, sure, Abbott. I used to sing in a fish market. Well, I had to sing for scales. <laughs> we had a quartet, Abbott. A, a fish market quartet? Certainly. We had first tuna, second tuna, barracuda, and bass. <laughs> <laughs> Did your quartet make any money, Costello? No, we just sang for the halibut. Uh, oh. <laughs> well, don't worry. We had a good purpose. <laughs> well, don't worry, Costello. 
<laughs> Wait till my talents get here. I'll get some good programs for your station. Oh, come in. Oh, Costello, it's that lovely new singer I discovered. Uh, come in, my dear. Oh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Costello, my name is Gladys Warshaw. You mean Schwarzhout. No, Warshaw. I work in the laundry. You look like you've been through the ringer. Now, shut up, Costello. Miss Washout is a wonderful singer. Uh, let her show you her range. I don't even want to see her kitchen. All right, never mind. Oh, but I have a very unusual voice. I hit a high C above a high A. Listen. Hello. Hello. They did. Okay. Goodbye. What happened? 600 men just knocked off work at Lockheed. Oh, let me out of here. Why did you insult that girl, Costello? She came here very highly recommended. In fact, I know her dressmaker. You're standing there and telling me that that dame's got a dressmaker? Certainly. I thought Betsy Ross only made flags. Come in. Pardon me, is this station IOU the voice of the creditors? Costello, look who it is. Cary Grant. Well, well. Hello, boys. How's everything? Hmm? Gee, Terry, you should have let me know you were coming over. I ain't prepared. Why, what do you mean? Well, if I knew you was coming, I would have got a finger wave. <laughs> oh, talk sense, Costello. Carrie, this, this visit's a great surprise. What brings you over here to Costello's radio station? Well, bud, next Sunday is Easter. You can't get those candy eggs, so I thought I'd come over here and pick up the real thing. Yuck, 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 yuck. <laughs> well, brother, you can pick that one up. You brought it in with you. <laughs> Don't take offense, Lou. I was only kidding. I think you're a very funny fella. In fact, everybody at our house gathers around the radio each Thursday night at 7 o'clock. Yeah? Yeah. And at 7.30, we turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> at 7.30, we're off the air! All right, never mind. Hey. Costello, you met Cary Grant's family. Certainly I met his family. I climbed up the tree and shook hands with his father. Uh, <laughs> you funny fella. Well, Costello, my family remembers you, too. Yeah. That, is, that is all but my grandmother. Don't your grandmother remember me? No, but she remembers your jokes. <laughs> hey, Abbott, you better hold me before I kill this guy. Wait a minute, you better think twice. He's as, twice as big as you are. Well, then hold him. <laughs> Quiet, Costello. Listen, Gary, is there something we can do for you here at the station? Bud, I'm going to do something for you. I found the most talented fellow in the country who will absolutely be a sensation on the air. The fellow's a genius, does everything. His name's Don Barclay. Come on in, Don. Nice to have you with us, Mr. Barkley. And uh, now, uh, what do you do? Can you sing? No. Do you recite? Uh-uh. Well, uh, can you do imitations? No. So far, this guy is loaded with talent. <laughs> uh, didn't I tell you? That's what everybody says. This guy will really build up your station. He's got a great program for the kiddies, too, where he reads the funny papers. Go ahead, Don. Read the funny papers. Okay. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, he sure loves those funny papers. <laughs> this guy's dynamite. <laughs> Are you almost through, Don? Not quite. <laughs> I'm through. <laughs> the papers were sure funny today, weren't they? <laughs> Oh, this fella kills me. He's going to make a name for himself. I got a couple of them right now for him. <laughs> Just a minute, Costello. Carrie, what else does Barkley do? Go on, you tell him, Don. Now, listen, Mr. Abbott. Carrie and I have worked up a great big finish. He stands on one side of the stage, and I stand on the other, and we juggle 75 Indian clubs back and forth without dropping a club. Are you ready, Mr. Grant? Ready, Mr. Barkley. Well, then, here we go. Up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, what kind of juggling is that? I didn't even see any Indian clubs. Oh, well, we haven't learned to do it with clubs yet. Get out of here. Now, get those things. Now, Connie Haynes sings a brand new song destined for the top. It's called To Heaven. One here in your eyes I 
never dreamed I'd kiss an angel. But darling, here you are in an overcoat of moonbeams, buttoned with a star. Once there were two mockingbirds. One was perfectly okay. And the other was as flat as the day before payday. Flat enough for you? Well, it can be worse than your cigarette. If wartime flatness is spoiling your smoking, get camels for more flavor. If you're looking for a cigarette that won't go flat no matter how many you smoke, get camels for more flavor. Now, I can tell you about Camel Cigarettes' extra flavor. Comes from the expert, matchless way camels are blended of costlier tobaccos. But the best way is to find out for yourself. In your T-zone, your taste and throat. Your taste will tell you that camels do have more flavor. The thing that helps them to hold up, keep from going flat, no matter how many you smoke. And your throat is your best judge of Camel Cigarettes' smooth, extra mildness. And of course... Camels stay fresh, cool smoking and slow burning because they're packed to go around the world. C-A-M-E-L-S Camel cigarettes, they're first in the service. They've got what it takes. Come in. Well, hello, fellas. How's the radio station coming along? Harry Grant! Get out of here now. I have enough trouble. Oh, your troubles are over, Costello. I've got just what you need, a great writer. That's what your station needs. Did you ever hear that famous poem, Snow, Snow, Beautiful Snow? Did he write that? No, he shoveled it. <laughs> Abbott, I wonder what the women see in this bump. Uh, shut up. Carrie. Well, that tell you? Carrie. <laughs> Where is this writer of yours? Right out the hall. His name's Dom Barkley. Come on in, Dom. Hello, fellas. Oh, the mental midget is back. <laughs> hey, Grant, this is the same guy that juggles without clubs. Ah, yeah, but he gave that up. He's a writer now. Now, show him one of your scripts, Don. But, uh, Carrie, this is a blank piece of paper. Oh, well, he hasn't learned to write with words yet. <laughs> Abbott, this guy is dumber than me. <laughs> oh, no, you mean dumber than I. Okay, he's dumber than the both of us. <laughs> Uh, just a moment, Mr. Costello. You've got the wrong piece of paper. Here's the script right here. Oh, it's a great show. And what are we waiting for? You fellas help us out. We'll show you just what this great program sounds like. The makers of Tip Top Toupee Pace present another episode in the life of our friend, Phil. <laughs> now, a word from our sponsor. Men, do you suffer from flying toupees? When the man in back of you sneezes, does the man in front of you automatically wear your toupee? <clears throat> Tip-top toupee paste is sure stick in the daytime and easy to remove at night. Listen to one purchaser remove his toupee. Ow! Oh, my head! My head! Ah! 
And now, and now to our friend, Phil. <laughs> As we look in upon Phil today, he is all alone in his room, waiting for his long-lost brother, Randolph, whom he has not seen for 40 years. Suddenly, there is a knock at the door. The door opens, and Phil speaks. No, no, Randolph, it can't be you. No, no, it can't be you. Tune in tomorrow. Can it be him or somebody else? Say, Carrie, that was a great program. Has Mr. Barkley got any more of them? Oh, I've got lots of them. Would you like to hear my all-night record program? Now, wait a minute, Barkley. I bought one of them last week from Alan Ladd. Oh, come on. Give Don a chance, Costello. Let's all pitch in. Try it out. Okay. The makers of Miller's Meatless Meatballs bring you the all-night record program. Remember, folks, when you go to your butcher's tomorrow, ask for Miller's Meatless Meatballs. You can easily recognize Miller's Meatless Meatballs and it is the only meatball that weighs 200 pounds. <laughs> and here's Happy Louie to bring you nothing but music. Come in, Louie. Thank you. Thank you. And a goody, good evening to you record fans everywhere. This is Happy Louie, about to bring you the longest uninterrupted record program on the air. 72 hours of music each day. <laughs> We start off this continuous dance music with a recording of T for Two, played by Freddie Farfel <laughs> and his Makes You Want to Sit This One Out Dance Orchestra. <laughs> okay, Freddie Farfel, T for Two. This number is being dedicated to Mr. and Mrs. Krausmeyer on their 73rd wedding anniversary. Good luck, kids. <clears throat> Also dedicated to Richard and Rodney on their birthday. Congratulations to Harry and Julia on their new sea book. <laughs> also dedicated to cockeyed Sam the Salad Man at Jaime's Delicatessen. And a Snooky Pie. And now, back to dancing and tea for two. I want to interrupt the music for just a moment to tell you that you're listening to a recording of Tea for Two. Attention all women over 400 pounds. Are you fat? When you walk by the corner drugstore, does the scale outside jump inside? <laughs> when you stand up, do your rubber heels spread out like pancake batter? Can you lose your last dollar at poker and still walk away with a pot? <laughs> then get yourself a jar of Patch of fat away reducing cream tonight. Now, a word from a satisfied user, Mr. Phil H. Finlay. <laughs> I used to weigh 385 pounds. I was so fat that when I sat on a drugstore stool, I had a hangover. <laughs> but since using your reducing cream, I am now down to only 26 pounds. <laughs> Girls notice me now. <laughs> I'm the only fella on my block who holds his loose skin around in a trailer. You have been dancing to the music of T for Two. Well, fellas, how'd you like Don Barkley's program? Huh? Now, come on, how'd you like Don's program? Well, uh, can he do anything else besides, uh, not right? Oh, yeah, yeah. He does some great imitation of wild animals. Don, do your imitation of a wild mountain goat. Bah. Now two goats. Bah, bah. Now three goats. Hold on, goats! Hold on, goats, Abbott! Listen, Barkley, can you imitate that rare bird, the wild Australian auk? The, uh, wild Australian auk? Well, how does it go, Costello? Come here, Barkley, I'll show you. Just put your neck between my two hands. Like this. That's right. Get out of here! Go on! Everybody out! Abbott and Costello will be back in just a moment. Thanks to the Yanks of the Week. Tonight, we salute Private William Page of Oriskany, New York, an infantryman with the Fifth Army in Italy. 
While crawling toward Nazi machine gun nests, Private Page met a German patrol, bayoneted one of the enemy, and shot another. Then, together with his lieutenant, he attacked two machine gun nests with rifle fire, wiping out all the Germans in both of them. In your honor, Private William Page, the makers of camels are sending to our soldiers overseas 300,000 camel cigarettes. Each of the four camel radio shows honors the yank of the week, sends 300,000 camel cigarettes overseas, a total of more than a million camels sent free each week. In this country, the traveling camel caravans have thanked audiences of more than three and a half million yanks with free shows and free camels. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States four times a week, a short wave to our men overseas and to South America. Listen tomorrow to Gary Moore and Jimmy Durante. Saturday to Bob Hawk in Thanks to the Yanks. Monday to Blondie, and next Thursday to Abbott and Costello with their guest, Mr. George Brett. Now, for just a moment, I'd like to talk to every woman between 20 and 35 who isn't doing a war job. The Navy wants waves, wants them so badly that many special advantages are being given. You'll have free travel to New York City for training, a chance to go to specialized schools to become expert in radio or aviation or a dozen other jobs. All expenses like food, clothing, and medical care will be paid. So your salary will equal a civilian salary of $150 to $235 a month. If you're 20 to 35, a citizen with two years high school or business school, single or married with no children under 18, apply to your naval recruiting station. You can find it in the phone book. Or write to Waves, Washington 25, D.C., for the free booklet, The Story of You in Navy Blue. That's Waves, Washington 25, D.C. And now, here's Abbott and Costello with the final word. Thanks, Ken. Well, that's about all we have time for. Good night, folks. And don't forget to tune in next week. Our special guest will be George Brent. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Be sure and tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show with our special guest, Mr. George Brent. Cary Grant is currently in production in RKO's None But the Lonely Heart. And remember, get camels for more flavor. If you're looking for a cigarette that won't go flat no matter how many you smoke, get camels for more flavor. This is Ken Niles wishing you a very pleasant good night from Hollywood.